three, two, one. What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. I'm your host, 34. And tonight, we have a very special guest. We have Wacko from Wack Donuts in the building. How you doing, Wacko? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, thank you. you. Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, you know, it's a Wednesday. Can't complain. We over the hump. You know, just trying to get to that weekend. Uh, thank you again for for stopping by and making time for for this uh, podcast for this interview. Definitely appreciate your openness to share your story. So thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure. Show sure. uh, for the folks out there who are unfamiliar with the flow of the show, we do some intro, some warm up questions just to set the tone. Um, after that, we'll jump into the main portion where either you can choose your destiny by choosing your own numbers, or you, we could turn it to the wheel of fate where we let it land where it lands. Um, and then after that, we will get into some final stretch questions and it'll be all over after that. Sound good to you, Wacko? Sounds good. All right, man. Well, my very first question for you is how have you been? It's been a crazy couple years, crazy times, always crazy times. Um, how you been holding up? You've been doing well, been doing great. Uh, well, I've been telling like a lot of the homies, I'm okay. I'm not great, but I'm okay. I feel you. I feel you. Um, I've definitely, I've had some, some family loss. I've lost some friends, uh, been dealing with some, you know, the current housing, uh, moratorium here in uh, San Francisco is, is crazy. Um, been dealing with that and it's just weird in, in, during all that, I like started my own business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Um, you know, what made you just like flip that switch to like this crazy time? You know, uh, when probably most businesses aren't thinking about, you know, coming out there. So, what what made you make that switch? So, um, I mean, part of that's grief. Uh, going back to uh, the family loss, uh, my uh, a mentor and my aunt passed away unexpectedly uh, back in 2019. And um, the job I was at, at the time, um, I was still reeling from losing my mom the previous year. So it was kind of like I was having like back to back, just like lost, man. And um, towards the end of 2019, my job just wasn't supporting me. So we, we kind of agreed to go our separate ways. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I filed for, you know, unemployment. Um, but then I tried looking for work and this is right when the pandemic started to ramp up and, uh, I got close to, I got a job, but then everything was shut down. And so, uh, as the summer was coming, that's like when I lost my grandfather, when I was in middle school. So, you know, I always think about him and my kind of go-to, if it's not dancing, it's baking. And so um, I just started baking a lot. And uh, um, a homegirl was like, hey, you know, I know, I know you're like in the donuts. You ever bake donuts? And I was like, nah. And um, she was like, you should try it. I think, you know, you kill it. And I was like, OK. So um, I started just like, you know, off of this basic recipe. Because um, I used to, in- she knows that I used to, I used to intern in a, uh, at a donut shop, you know, back in my high school days, like, or 20 years ago. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> I got um, you. <laughs> Uh, that's 2000 the world was supposed to end so you know um so i just started baking and like like an old person man like my my crib was just filling up with donuts and i was like oh, and i gotta you know share the wealth and I, I started giving it out to friends my neighbors and uh my boy fernando super opinionated but that's like my my dude uh since back in the day and he was like bro i haven't had a good donut in a long time these are like cake and he was like, uh, I don't know, man, I think you're onto something. And I was like, eh, you know, like your friends kind of gassed you up a little bit, you know, like, no, nah, man. And so, you know, I went to school for graphic design back in the day and I made a quick little logo, found some, some boxes online. And I was like, okay, let me try this out just to see what happens. And yeah, it, it just started gaining more and more traction. And then uh, all my vegan homies were like, dude, your donuts look good. I wish they were vegan. And I was like, wait a minute, give me a second. I just went back to the lab and uh, I was already not using like dairy to begin with. So um, yeah, I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna be a full 100% vegan like operation. And here I am now. 
Uh, just just like that, huh? Just like that, huh? <laughs> yeah, one year already uh, last month was my anniversary. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, that's crazy. That's a crazy story. And it sounds like, you know, you had a lot of uh, a lot of things kind of lead you up to this point. Um, just kind of curious. Is, do you is this you see this as a passion or is this just something that's going to help you kind of grow into the next stage or, you know, wherever it is you're trying to take your life? Uh, it's a, I think it's a combination of all, dude. It, it, it wasn't like, you know, how a lot of people got into stuff over the pandemic, you know, like new hobbies or, you know, whatever. But like, the more I got into this, I was just like, you know what, man, I really don't want to go back to a nine to five. You know, um, I enjoy, I still enjoy doing it. Um, the feedback, you know, I'm always open to feedback. People are like, you know, yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely at some point want to um, hopefully get a, a small storefront. Um, and just keep pushing this thing, man. Cause, um, yeah, it, 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 I even kind of got upset sometimes too. when people are like, Oh, you still enjoy doing it? Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this like six days a week, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so a Monday is like my, my rest and reset day. But, um, I, I've just been really lucky and, and, and privileged to, uh, have people take notice of me. I've worked with like some big name groups I can't really name due to you know NDA no worries stuff. yeah 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 uh, um, just trying to be respectful but um the 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 feedback from my my, my, my close friends and um you know the rest of my family that's still around you know it keeps me pushing man and and I don't mind rolling out of my bed at like you know four or five in the morning to start my day um I'm a math scientist. I really don't sleep. I'm always thinking about new, new like flavors and flips on flavors. Um, so yeah, I definitely see myself doing this like for definitely for for the long run. That's sick, man. I mean, I, I definitely vibe with what you said about you know people getting into new stuff during the whole pandemic, and we're still kind of in it. But this podcast, man, I probably would never have thought about it um, if I if it wasn't for that extra time and just all the shit that was happening during during these last couple couple years that like really made me think about what i valued and you know um what it is i want to put out there in the world so i feel you on that uh i had another question but it kind of left my mind but hopefully hopefully it comes back to me Uh, yeah yeah well let's move on to some more warm-up questions um we've officially made it to the warm-up section and my first warm-up question for you is well what would you like the audience to know about you i know you mentioned some things but is there anything in particular that you just want people to know about you right off right off the bat um i'm 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 a genuine soul <laughs> uh and i'm like literally the last black man in sf <laughs> <laughs> So I feel that. Kind of, kind of not, but uh, no, nah, I'm I'm a local, and that that's that's rare. People um, bug out when I tell them I'm from San Francisco, and um, and they bug out too that I'm so like they, that I'm so genuine. And they're like, "Wow, dude, you're just you're such a like stand up dude." And I'm like, well, that's just the way I was raised. So um, I really feel like I'm I'm truly authentic in in, in every you know sense of the word. Um, I don't sugarcoat stuff. Like if, if I dig your vibe, then we're good. If I don't dig your vibe, then you know keep it pushing. You know. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm with you there too. Uh, you know that took me a long time to kind of understand for myself that there's just some people you won't get along with, and that's okay. <laughs> you just gotta keep it moving, like you yeah. said. Yeah. Uh, you know there was a time, at least for me personally, I was kind of wanting people, everyone to like me. You know, I think that that's a natural. Thing that people feel sometimes they just want to be accepted uh, but once you do find your your thing or you find your people or find a place you feel like you belong then it you really do, are able to let go of other other things and like really care about you don't care so much about what everyone thinks about you you just care about what those people that matter to you kind of think about you you know uh well yeah i remembered the question and it was uh how could a person get some whack donuts you got a store for now or you 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 have to order through you or yeah so um you know i'm i'm literally doing everything i'm like the, the graphic designer the hr all that um but for right now what's the easiest for me um until i get uh, a website up 
uh, which is coming soon, is uh, just hitting me up through the Whack Donuts um, Instagram. Um, I post uh, the menu for the month where you can find me because I, I pop up um, at different places uh, in San Francisco, but now I'm getting an East Bay like love. So um, there's a couple festivals coming up. Um, um, August 29th, there's a Hella Plants Market that's going to be happening out in Oakland. And then um, Labor Day weekend, um, I'll be in Berkeley at the Berkeley uh, Festival um, popping up there. Um, but people can do curbside pickup uh, here in the Mission. And uh, yeah, so right now, just hit me up through the uh, slide into my DMs. What the kids are saying now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think it's the next thing. I I, I feel you though. <laughs> I, I say slide yeah. into the DMs too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just hit me up on um, on on Instagram. Um, I'm on that account till about 10 p.m. Uh, just so I have like you know my me time and, and I see uh, what orders I got for the next day. So hit me up the day before and um, I got you. Or if you want to um, order something and pick up at my pop up, that's an option too. Gotcha gotcha uh so yeah all the folks out there make sure to slide into his dms um you'll, you'll find the link in the description and everything but uh let's uh get to the second warm-up question and it is if someone were to pay you a tribute how would you like to be honored so you know if i was going to tell myself today i'm gonna do something in in the honor of uh wacko what what act could i do for you oh man I feel like I'm at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> See, I never, I never mentioned it, but you know, it's like I, 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 I never want to say it. You know. <laughs> um, Let's say you I moved away. Know. You moved away. That's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I moved away. So I, I, I like, like to there. If if, uh, if I were uh, to be tributed, um, I'd say uh, playing a song. Play, probably playing one of my favorite James Brown songs. For sure. It could be for me, you know, because everyone knows uh, I'm a, I'm, I love music. I'm also a dancer. Um, got in the break in back in high school, um, which is how the name Whack Donuts kind of came to be. Um, but yeah, uh, if people were to pay tribute for me, just play some music, you know, play, play some James Brown. What's the what's that one James Brown song that? Oh, uh, give it up, turn it loose. <laughs> All right, we got you, we got you. Now we know. Now we know what to do yeah. for you, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. T- uh, if you don't mind, tell me a little more about dancing. Like, how how big a part of it is of your life now? Com- you know, is it still you would say like thirty percent or a little bit lower? Um, I I had to st- uh, I had to take a step back. Um in terms like because i was teaching i was traveling i was i was almost i almost didn't make it back when everything went really went down i was on on my way to uh denmark uh for a competition uh with my boy who was already overseas and i got as far as russia and then when i got off the plane that's when the world just kind of like fell apart and the guy was like you must get on the next plane back home or you'll be stuck and so um, yeah yeah that's how long it was and actually my 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 my, my homie uh, uh he was stuck in europe for like three months but yeah um, we, he was able to get back already or? He was, yeah he, he yeah. was able to get back but um like if that was me i i, ha- I know people in europe but i don't know people like that and at the time i still you know have my my, my place and my uh, roommate situation um but yeah um I'm not entering any competitions. Um, people, uh, a lot of the homies have been, you know, I've been watching from afar, entering stuff. Um, and I mainly do it now to keep in shape. It's like, you know, I'm like a samurai man. I'm like even in times of peace, I still keep my sword sharp, but I'm not competing. Um, I'm not mentally there. Physically, I feel okay. I still work out. Um, I've been trying my best to work out. I also do Muay Thai. Supposed to, I actually had, I was supposed to fight. <laughs> Before all that, all this uh, drama went down too. Um, but uh, it's still there. I still got a love for dance. I just, I had to kind of take a break um, and really just kind of like cope and deal with like, you know, all the loss and just everything happening in the world, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, my Asian brothers and sisters getting assaulted, you know, just all, just all this like nonsense, the moratoriums and, and, and then there's my family stuff. So it was like, there was a lot. And um, I know 
when I'm not here mentally and spiritually, I, I can't I can't perform and compete to the level like I normally am used to. So, um, but um, 2022, I'm hoping next year, and you know, as things kind of ease up, you know, hopefully um, I'll, I'll be competing uh, a lot more and uh, teaching. So I'm trying to do a lot. I'm trying to maintain a business and and compete and teach uh, workshops um, and organize events. I actually threw an event during a pandemic last year and that was like crazy yeah how that let me uh, can i ask you how that how that go was it a big turnout or did you have to go through a lot of obstacles you know just to, to host it yeah so um i i've been throwing events uh since 2017 well technically 2014 but um 2017 i, I started uh an event uh, where i partnered like two different dance styles so say like uh, locking and popping, breaking and and uh, rock dance, like and hat one on one. So uh, I was doing it at my friend's studio out in East Bay at a uh, movement studios. Um, and then by obviously 2020, you know the world shut down, and uh, I had to do it. Um, I was I was like 50 50 whether or not I was going to do it um, because at by at that point all the COVID and protocols were different so that's when everyone was like oh you gotta spray down surfaces and, and it was it was crazy but um i talked to a homegirl who uh was familiar with all the like updated protocols um and she actually helped an event in vegas get like you know done uh, she was kind of on the same team and she was like oh if you do it outdoors it'll be a lot easier and i was like cool but Man, like, even when I was taking my Muay Thai class uh, at Qzar, my coaches were getting sweated by, like, the park police, which is mm -hmm. weird because Qzar is, like, public space. And so, and they had to get a permit and all this other drama, and I didn't really want to go through that, and I saw that, so I was just like, let me do it in the East Bay, because East Bay was a little bit more relaxed, um, and I literally just was walking around trying to find parks. I was like, you know what, let's go old school. Let's just do a park jam. Um, but I kept it, like, I think 50 was, like, my capacity. And I had a lot of upset people. Like, oh, I want to go. I, mean, I was just like, dude, if you're not a competitor or my staff, sorry. You know? Um, and, you know, I've been, like I said, this is, like, my fifth event. It It's supposed to get easier, but the stress is always there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I was on the microphone, like, Hey y'all, six feet, six feet. You know, I have some folks that came out from SoCal. I have folks from like, you know, East Coast. Um, um, but I felt it was the event was good because I, I always check out. I'm just trying to get through it. I'm, I was spraying stuff down. I didn't have a bathroom. Oh, the bathrooms were locked at the park. I didn't have a permit, so I kind of went wild style, old school. You know, hoping that no one would narc on us. Like I saw like cop cars rolled by a couple times and I just kind of waved at them and they just kind of like gave me the heads up and they just kept going so we were able to do the event um that's what's up man that's pretty fortunate I feel like somebody I'm surprised not one person said something but uh that's, wow. that's, that's fortunate it, it, yeah it was it was, it was it was dope man it's like my boy made a, a kind of like a, a highlight clip and everyone that came and visited you know they hit me up on like Instagram like yo dude thanks for doing that um, cause I just wanted to kind of offer at least like three or four hours of just escapism from just all the, the, you know, the BS of the, the pandemic, you know, I, I still have people, you know, wear masks, you know, cause, um, I don't think anyone was vaccinated at that point. No, it was, the vaccine wasn't even on the table yet. And I, I'd rather be super like safe than sorry you know and i tell people like hey you can be mad at me but you're not gonna get covid coming to my event i you gotcha know? yeah yeah you're gonna do so, everything uh, you know i think you know everyone appreciated like you know me being on them so hard um that they may not have liked my demeanor in the moment but i was just like dude like i want to make sure everyone's safe and so even people that were already in the park were like oh what is this and i was like Oh, it's like a dance competition. Can you sign this waiver? <laughs> you know, and, sure. and, and you know, it was a blast. And we ended it with the, um, I like to do a social dance with everyone, like, you know, old school, like electric slide type thing. And yeah, and that's how we ended it. Before I knew it, you know, we were sweeping up and we were done. 
So. That's what's up, man. Oh, well, congratulations on a successful event. And I'm Thank glad you. it went off without a hitch. <laughs> uh, and my uh, last question for you in the warm up is scale from one to 10, how well do you know yourself? Is it like one, I really know myself, or is it like 10, I don't know myself? Other way around. So 10, you know yourself. One, you um, don't know yourself. Yeah. Um, i say uh, right now, um, I'm probably like at a, a six, just because um, I'm not the same person I was like, you know, last, even last year or even like five years ago. So it's like, I'm getting a better idea of who I am, um, especially as I'm dealing with all the stuff that I'm dealing with you know right now so um yeah i'm between like a six and a seven for sure what what would you say is your favorite thing about your personality uh just how goofy i can get sometimes for sure uh how how would you describe your your sense of humor oh man dude i'm a i'm a 90s kid so um (laughs) I'm from like the views and butthead, Rain Stimpy, like Snick days. So um, I got I'm you. Pretty, <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty all over the place, you know. It's, it's not too like you know nasty, but it's like I'm not boring. So yeah, I hear you, man. Of, like you know, it's like I grew up watching Living Color and Married with Children, so it's like I know most of those shows won't fly today, but you know. Oh yeah, Married with Children. I don't think so, man. <laughs> But uh, for sure, man. Well, we, we made it to the main portion of the interview where either you choose your destiny by choosing your own numbers or we could turn to the Wheel of Fate. Where would, Which direction would you like to go? Uh, I got one number in mind. Okay, you want to start off with that or you want to end with that? Yeah, we'll start off with a number. Okay. And then we'll freestyle after that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, Two. Number two. And then this... I gotta ask, easy, medium, or hard? There are three levels to this. Uh, let's go. Let's go with medium. Medium two. Your question is, uh, what do you feel about? How do you feel about today's social climate? Man, uh, I was watching. Um, I love Paul Mooney. Um. And uh, I knew about Paul Mooney before Chappelle show just because the house I grew up in. Um, but I was watching an interview that he did recently, and uh, he said something that had me like, you know, like really giggling. But it's so true. He was like, he says today's generation wants their grits now, and I had to wait 20 years to get mine. <laughs> wants the grits and now? Really, oh, yeah, gosh. and it's like the only thing about grits, grits take a while to cook. You know. Mm. I did not and, know that. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like grits, the grits take, take a while to cook, um, especially if you want them right. <laughs> uh, but I, I identify with that just because, like, you live in, like, an instant, you know, like, now, now, now. It's just, like, so no one's taking the time to, like, really research stuff. No one's taking the time, you know, for a lot of things. Or, so it's just, like, the social construct of today, it, it, it trips me out. Um... You know, news is getting out super fast, yes, but is it accurate, is it true, or is it just out there? You know, uh, social media is like, you know, it, it, it almost rules everything. Everyone's an expert, you know, um, whether it be like talking about, you know, COVID, you know, vaccination, you know, politics, religion, all that. It's just like, everyone's an expert now. And I'm just like, what makes you an expert, you know? Um, what's going on with uh, certain like ethnic groups, you know, gender types and all that. It's, 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 it's mad, you know, it's, it's really mad. So, um, nothing like how it was, you know, when I was like, you know, a kid in the nineties. I mean, I feel like it was more taboo to talk about certain things. You know, it was a very don't ask, don't tell, you know, type of uh, situation. Now it's like, where are things out there? But you can't have an opinion anymore without getting into like this like social media like fight. And it's just like, you know, like cancel culture and all that. It's like, it's, it's a trip. So yeah, man, <laughs> the, the social uh, scene is, is, is very interesting. Oh, for sure. Now, do you think it would have been 
more helpful or hurtful to not have grown up in the 90s like that we never we would have never known like a a time before this because i feel like it's been like this probably around maybe 2008 ish to now when social media was really starting to pick up and it has, it has a similar vibe that's just been been intensifying so you know growing up in the 90s you could you know of a world before all this stuff is it more hurtful or helpful would you say i i, I think it's a it's it's a uh for me personally i think it's more helpful um because i feel like each generation it's like that so it's like what they lacked in the 60s you know going into the 70s going into the 80s and even the 90s you know because you know i was there when like the internet was still kind of like figuring things out you know i mean i would just want to go on the computer lab and download some like pictures of dragon ball z you know i'm trying to get my goku on my like folder um and now it's like you know like i remember zynga before my myspace and all that like instant messenger um but i just feel like i was you know i was still playing you know i have video games yes but i was still outside playing with the homies like i call you up on your phone you're like yo like can you know so and so come out <laughs> and play like cool um <laughs> but yeah i think um I, I, I was in a I, I was in a good base period for like everything to come, you know. So so jokes that we you know like you know when we see the dirty dozens, it's like yeah, there's no way I can do that today, you know, without really hurting someone's feelings and or and being brought up on like charges. I mean, I'm exaggerating that part, but you know, you never know. If I was like uh, someone in the know, you know, um, I really have to watch what I say, and I think. You know, you should definitely be mindful of what you say, but like, as long as what you're saying isn't like, you know, um, derogatory or like hurting people, you know, there's also that that sense of like, well, I can't even like be who I want to be, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, people don't want to wear masks, you know, or they're being told this, they're being told that. And it's just like, I'm like this, like, Every every person is, is their own is their own like entity. So if you don't want to wear a mask, I'm not going to tell you to wear a mask. If you don't want to get vaccinated, I'm not going to tell you to get vaccinated. But we also have lost that bigger scope. It's like, well, are you a doctor? You know, are you a, are you a scientist? Like, if, if this is going to help, you know, curb the numbers or whatever, you know, what's wrong? Just doing that, you know. And no more, and even more so now, we're, we're so disjointed. And, you know, I used to be a teacher and I used to tell people when they're like, oh, what's, isn't it hard being a teacher? I'm like, yeah. So the kids are easy, though. It's still mm -hmm. the parents. That's the hard part. You know, you give kids options and it's all good. You know, make sure they're eating. It's all good. When you talk to the parents, man, it's like, ah, so. Yeah, I, I think it definitely helped me more than anything. And um, as, I, as long as you have a good, I, I feel like if you, as long as you have a good, strong upbringing, no matter what era you come up in, you'll be able to like adjust, you know, for the next generation or the, the new thing that's like coming. So I feel like majority of 90s kids, like, you know, have a good base. For sure, for sure. Uh, do you think, where we are right now, are right it, now it, is irreversible, it's irreversible or like yeah with the yeah, issues with that the we do have problem. with uh people feeling like you know they want things right away or like instant gratification um could we go back to the days of seeing life as a longer in a longer lens than you know wanting things in the moment because honestly i struggle with that i had two failed projects before starting this podcast where i was wrapped up in that where like i wanted to see the growth and i wanted to see the followers i wanted to see all that like happen overnight you know i tell myself oh year i'm gonna make it and then i get really discouraged when it doesn't happen i'm just like well you know do i suck or is it not for me kind of thing and then like a one year is not that much right like you, you need to be thinking long term like 10 years down the road with something um so yeah do you think we're at a point where there's too many like because there's people we see it happen to where like they become overnight celebrities or you know something happens where that that influence is is just you know that's the new wave and i have to adjust to it kind of thing you know yeah i mean 
and I'm gonna make this correlation just because like this, this literally happened to me. So like I, I got into breaking like like sophomore, junior year in high school, so like ninety seven, ninety eight or whatever. But I didn't get good until like my mid twenties. You know what I'm saying? And I for a second I was like, oh I'm I wanna be dope. I'm gonna be like, you know, the best like B boy in the world. But it took time, man. And because I didn't take it serious too. You know, and even with my my donut business, um, it's it's now I'm really starting to get traction. Um, yeah, there's I have my moments where I'm just like, you know, crap, I feel like, you know, I should be here or I get I'm trying to work with all these people that want to work with me now. Um, but nothing, I, I don't think anything's ever irreversible. You can only go back so far, I think. You know, like, I miss the 90s. I, I, I like, freaking miss the 90s, like, like hard. But and as corny as, it, you know, some points in the 90s were, um, I miss that, too. Um, but I could, you know, pay homage and, and, and remember the things that, you know, made that era so dope but um you know as crazy as things are right now i, I still have hope you know depending on the day of the week <laughs> yeah i still have hope. um um so yeah like yeah uh, i don't that's why sometimes i don't even like go too hard on, on these cats that are like all about instant gratification but also too, I get I get to a uh, and this comes from experience where I, I stop really stressing over like the other guy or the other girl or the other person, you know. If you know some of the homies like and I, I and I say this too from you know working with vendors, I love the community because everyone wants to see everyone win. So even this this cat's like if you're a, like a rival like vendor or whatever, or if I had a podcast too and like all of a sudden I'm killing it and you're doing it more than me, you know, um, and you kind of helped me get get there, you know, I'm I'm definitely not going to forget you. I mean, like, oh, like, you know, 34 questions, like, you know, put me on and I'll send stuff your way. So that that's how it should be. But, you know, there's things that you do, like, I, I, I mean, one, props to you for even doing a podcast because I've, I've seen countless homies do podcasts and, you know, they do it for like maybe a month and they just stop, you know, um, because I know that there's a lot of work that goes into that. But again, where I'm at in my life with everything I'm dealing with, I'm not I'm not really worried about the other person. You know, it's not a competition for me. It's like I'm going to master my craft as best as I can. And, you know, like anything, the proof, you know, people will, will acknowledge that at some point. You know, it, even if it's like three years from now, you know, um, you still have your set goals, you know, as long as you get like you know, um, you stay disciplined and, and focused, it might come sooner than you think, you know. And I've learned that with my dance, you know. I was like, man, I didn't get dope until like I was like, you know, almost thirty. <laughs> but that journey, though, man, it's like I I have to step back, and people like know me around the world. They're like, my boy was like, you know, you're a world champion, right? And I was like, oh. Wow, you're right. <laughs> I am, you know. So, and I say that like with no ego, but um, even with my my business, it's like, you know, people are like when I hear people are like, "Yo, dude, it's, I just enjoy watching you like get better and better." Like every time I see you post, and I, I had a pop up today, and one of the um the customers at my homegirl's cafe where she lets me pop up, she was like, I'm "So sorry, you know, like um, I, I she has a podcast too." And she was like, I'm gonna get you on, you know, family. I'm like, nah, it's all good. You know, I know you're doing your family thing, but she was like, yeah, man, but it's just dope watching you do what you do. And cause I, bro, I had limited resources, so. Yeah, man, you know. it's your, your performing well, miracles. <laughs> time meeting, but like, you know, I, I, I have faith and I believe in you, bro. So that's, that's why I like, I like, I, I was digging with what you were like about, so, you know. I don't. I don't care if you have like a million viewers or whatever. It's it's just the, the essence of you, and in the footage that I saw, I was like, yeah, I I, I kind of want to mess with this cat. So, yeah, man. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, you know, as an entrepreneur or just someone who's trying to work for stuff, you, um, I think you know how, how um how valuable it is just to hear that from somebody else, right? Like just to hear like you're doing a good job or I like what you're doing. 
because I think we're we're our biggest doubters too, right? Like we we always kind of second guess ourselves and you know don't trust the process and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, th thank you so much for for telling me that because uh, yeah, I mean I, I I don't know if you're the same way, but it's really hard to ask for help. It's really hard to like you know try to bring people into into something when you're not sure of it yourself you know like i think that's been one of my biggest issues as far as trying to create projects I don't, and maybe you could kind of shed light on that as well uh like how to build a team you know especially when you're creating something and you 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 want for, for it to go you know that saying it's like if you want to go fast do it by yourself if you want to go far do it together kind of thing right. <laughs> yeah and it's like i still haven't had that together part you know i guess that's why for, for people who might be seeing my growth yeah maybe i'm getting better quicker but it is because like you know um doing it solo also gives you those advantages of like not having to make a decision as a group you don't have to convince people to go in a certain direction um yeah so for you think you have you built your team or you're in the process of that or you like things yeah you know, um solo? It's, it's kind of a an uh, amalgamation of all that um so like when I had my first big pop up um, at Malibu Burgers, um, it's a, a black owned uh, vegan uh, uh, fast food spot in Oakland. Um, guy hit me up and was like, "Yo, like, do you sell like your donuts? You know, I'll buy off you know wholesale." And I'm just like, "Oh crap!" Um, and I did one of my homies who was like uh, vending with his lady. Cause he used to work in a bank and he was like, y'all dude, see, you're, you're blowing up. So just like, you know, let me know what you need help with. And like I said, I still struggle sometimes with that, but uh, I have, now I have kind of like a dedicated, like I can call on like, you know, these three cats if, if I need help, you know, if, if they're available and they can help me pop up. Like my boy, um, Zach, he um, helped me uh, at my first pop up. He was working the reg. He was like making the donut milk because I did like a donut burger, donut milkshake. Um, we both. I used to work at Burger King back in the day, um, and even the, the day of my pop up, the the guy was like, "Oh, we're short staff. We can only do this for an hour. Um, we need someone working the reg." And I was like, "Dude, I can work the reg. Zach can work the reg, and we can both, you know, do X, Y, and Z." So I'm definitely gonna get to a point where I'm, you know, I'm gonna need you know, help, you know, just from my experience being an office manager, you know, I, I had to learn how to like, you know, delegate work. And then when I do my events, the same thing. So um, I try not to take on everything, you know, um, I think I've gotten better at being able to, you know, dish out work. But the most important thing is like, again, finding people that are down um, to help you like that. And so, um, I know when I get to that point, especially when I have a store from like, yeah, I'm definitely going to need, you know, a team. So um, I'm slowly getting there, you know. Um, so with the folks that, you know, I'm kind of rapping with, I'm like, you know, if they've had that talk, I'm like, yeah, dude, I totally like, you know, work for you. Like, I've only had like maybe one or two people say that to me. And I'm like, OK, but I remember that. <laughs> I'm just like, I hope they remember that. But, yeah. uh, I hear you. Yeah, man. It, it's, it's, um, it definitely helps with, like, you know, less burnout, you know, because I'm slowly, I've been, if I, I think in an ideal situation, if I didn't have the, the drama of, you know, my living situation and, you know, all the, you know, family loss, I think I'd, I'd totally be in the storefront. I, and obviously, you know, in a pandemic free world where everything is, isn't shut down. Yeah, cool. But, it's 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 hard to manage that you know um, when I'm selling out at pop ups and I come home but I don't feel like I'm coming to a home you know and it's nice to kind of have a team to kind of take your mind off that and be like hey man you're killing it you know you got your back or you know what bro like we can like do this pop up for you this weekend why don't you like just like take some time off yeah no for sure you got to have that balance. Um... But yeah, that that sounds great. I, I'm glad that you're piecing it, you know, I guess piece by piece and you kind of have to grow at, at a scale or like it and, you know, you don't want to rush it too much or else, you know, you'll have a big ass team with like not enough, 
events to work just yet uh yeah, and vice yeah, versa yeah. um the guy uh, that I, I, at the main guy that owns Malibu Burgers was like, bro, like I think you need your own storefront. You need to stop like playing because you're you obviously got dope product. People know what you're about. They like you. You know, you need a storefront. And like I totally hear that, but I, I still don't. I still don't want to jump into that too quick because then like weirdly, like a week later, my my old homie from high school, he like works at a bank and. He was like, be careful, bro. Like, don't jump into that so quick. And he's like, I don't want to see your business fail. And I was like, oh, crap, like, the universe is talking to me. So, yeah. Yeah. Peace by, that's, that's how I'm taking it right now. Peace by peace. For sure. For sure. Uh, let's uh, move on to another number, if you don't mind. Would you uh, like. Let's, let's, let, let, let's let fate decide. So let's go to the wheel of fate. Boom. Here we are. And uh, let's give it a spin. I was like, do I gotta click it? <laughs> oh, no, I got you. I got you. All right, cool. 31. Would you like 31. to go easy, medium, or hard on this one? Uh, let's go easy. Easy 31. It is, uh, what is some eye opening advice that you've received? Eye opening advice. Uh,. I mean, we kind of were lightly talking on it, uh, touching on it. Um, well, the obvious one for me is, is uh, not doubting myself. Um, I've had a couple of my mentors, like, you know, to like, you know, uh, hey man, like, you got this. You know, it's, it's like uh, the guy, Seth, who owns the studio, he said, like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like a, ahead of where I, I should be, you know, where most people kind of like struggle in the beginning. I'm a couple of steps ahead. So, um, you know, that that's a dope thing. But it also kind of ties into like the doubt that I have sometimes of like pulling the trigger on certain things or like really going with my gut feelings. But um, so it's a combination of like not having doubt and, and seeing that what he sees is like me being kind of ahead of the game in terms of like, you know, me starting a business for the first time. So I'm already kind of like just tightening. I'm just, now it's just really about tightening like things, like, you know, getting the website, you know, like going. Um, I have people already hitting me up that want, they're asking me like, oh man, do you ship? You know, cause I sent donuts down to San Diego one time and then, then everyone's like, oh shit, like you sent shipping out. I'm like, wait, <laughs> time out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was kind of a test run, you know, to see how like my donuts do, um, you know, when I ship them out. Um, but yeah, man, I, the doubt, man, I, I still wrestle with that every now and then, but um, that was definitely an eye-opening thing was when he was like, dude, you know, like your product is on point, you know, you your um, PR game is like on point. It's just really tightening up this things here and there, but you're there. So hearing that like really kind of overwhelming when he was like you're there and i'm just kind of like i, I am. am yeah i know <laughs> i feel that i feel that uh well why do you think people doubt themselves like what is, what is it you know about some folks because I'm, I'm one of those as well but i know not everybody does but why do you think we doubt ourselves uh i don't know i just think that's like uh i i, I just and they fear of like actually being successful at something. You know, um, the first time I left the country was, you know, the first time I like won my internet, an international competition, you know, but I was still kind of scared, you know, I've never left the country, never, I didn't even have a passport when I bought my ticket, you know, um, but I just think that's just a, uh, a weird way of, like I said, of our of, of uh, the self just kind of like stopping like something potentially dope that's probably going to happen versus like us like, you know, getting egg all over our face, you know? It's weird that we, we accept failing more than actually succeeding, you know? And just from my past experiences, like I've won lots of competitions. I've you know, I had successful moments in my life, you know, with, you know, being with like family, love, you know, the whole nine. There's still that, that fear, man. And it's just like, 
it doesn't get easier the more successful you get like at it because you're still wrestling with that but um yeah man i just think that's just like our own self-inflicted like you know it's like you know someone hammers your feet to the ground you're like come on just step forward i hear you, you man know? yeah I, I mean like personally for me I, what plays into it too is how much uh how, how we're the only ones that really know what's in our heads and how much effort and you know what it's going to take for us to do it and like nobody else really knows right they can see and but they only see really like the outcomes of our decisions and choices but that the time that we take to to make those decisions sometimes or like our our reason why um doesn't always get across or isn't interpreted the right way so like because we know the truth of a lot of the things that we do i think it uh it, it either builds barriers or it gives us that that push like it either motivates us or scares us right those are like the two things i think happens um and i'm not saying i'm right this is just like from, oh, yeah. from my perspective but uh yeah i think a lot of that plays into it too i mean yeah man I, I've, I've doubted myself for a long time and i mean i i don't like i didn't know i had a world champ on the show but uh <laughs> would you say that like you have this irrational belief that either you're meant to do something or you know like and that kind of drives you because i feel like for for me that's what it is even though i have the doubt there's there's always that other part that believes like even to to a fault and that keeps me going like do you do you feel that way sometimes oh yeah and then i mean what also kind of keeps me like going is like something my grandfather used to always say and when people i talk to people sometimes like i'll be like well this is a word i don't like using that much anymore but this why and um he used to say never question the why because the why will kill you damn like you know why didn't this girl call me back or like you no know, why does this taste like crap you know it's just... and, okay. and as i've gotten older you know i've i've it's meant different things to me depending on the situation because you know like some motivational speakers you know be like well, what's your why like why are you doing this like and like when i ask some people here in the bay like why are you trying to throw an event during the pandemic like what what's the reasoning behind that and 90 percent of the time they don't have an answer you know i know why i did my event last year i did four you know and that was something i wanted to you know finish Plus, I was helping a friend with a studio because all the money that people donated to the GoFundMe, that's how you got the address for the event, number one. And then two, it's like that helped. I didn't get any money off that. That well, all that went to my, my, my home. You know, so I didn't understand what my grandfather meant because like my aunt reminded me that he used to say that all the time. And I was like, that's why grandpa used to say that all the time. Hmm. But I don't question why, you know, for me anyways, I don't question the why anymore uh, at this point in my life. Even what I'm going through right now or losing three family members like back to back for three years. It sucks, you know, but I try not to live there or like why some weeks I sell out and why some weeks I don't. I got you. I got you. Honestly, you just broke the glass for me, man, because I'm I'm that kind of person who always asks why and now I'm just like damn I don't want it to kill me so <laughs> I kind yeah. of uh that's gonna help me out uh definitely appreciate you uh sharing that uh the why will kill you I got you all right just a heads up we have about 10 minutes left in the podcast uh want to thank you again for coming through I hope you're having fun this has been uh, great for me uh I think we got time for one more spin so uh let's go do that real quick all right it's like the wheel of fortune <laughs> yeah it's the wheel of fate man <laughs> oh vibe check the vibe check this is the other screen you haven't gotten to see yet but it looks like this oh okay. and uh let me get you on here because i forgot to throw you on there boom um okay. so this is the vibe check i don't know can, can you see it clearly or not so much yeah. i see the open-minded closed-minded somewhere in between sunny skies very clouds but you know it's more Okay, it's empty. Okay. We'll go through it. We'll go through it together. Um, okay. And the first one is, uh, you feel like you're more open-minded, closed-minded, or somewhere in the middle? 
I feel like I'm pretty open minded. For sure. Uh, has there ever been anything that made you go like, nah, not for me? <laughs> uh, you know, just like like anything, certain like you know, music or TV shows. Yeah. Just like, not my vibe. I got you. Yeah, no, I feel you too. Uh, sometimes you gotta you just kind of see it to just to know that that's not for you. I know I've had a lot of those moments in my life. <laughs> uh the second one is do you feel like you're a deep thinker or you know you try to stay on the surface a little more uh it depends on my emotional state i know um definitely when i'm when i'm up it, it's it, nothing really uh really i'm not really thinking too much but it's uh when i'm like kind of low i definitely think think more mm. like I when i'm low it's, it's like calm to like not so much sad, but just like, just, you know, melancholy, I guess. Yeah. So I, I, tend to, I, I tend to like deep a little bit, uh, think a little deeper. And I'm in that, uh, that's, that kind of state of mind. I got you. I got you. The third one is, uh, are you more of a sunny skies person or are you more like more realistic? I don't like saying pessimistic, but you know, um, more of a realist. I'm mixed. Again, it's um, I'm ruled by my emotions. I'm an Aries. <laughs> <laughs> I got I'm a you. Song, so it's like you know, fire is unpredictable sometimes. You know, uh, but yeah, I, I can I can be you know uh, either that up or down. <laughs> so I got I'm, you. I'm and uh, the last one of the vibe check is: uh, Do you think we're all individuals, or do, do you think we're all one? Man, you got me thinking about Transformers now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, tell, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think you know we're, we're we're individuals that are drawn to like groups of like-minded like folk. Because at the end of the day, you really just do have yourself when you're you know back in your um, your room looking up at the wall. Um, but um. Very, it kind of makes me think about high school. Like high school, public high school, especially for me, was a trip because everything was segregated. You know, what? Like, like black people over here, white kids over here, you know, Asian kids over here. You know, I, that that messed me up. But the thing about me is, I like being around everybody. I feel you. Know? you. So like, I got. That's why I feel like I'm probably the most cultured black dude, you know, you meet. I've hung out with Lao, Korean, Chinese, uh, Hmong, you know, Mexican, Salvadorian, you know, Hanoi, you know, the list goes on. So it's it's kind of like weird to me to just be only like in one specific group. And even with like, you know, hip hop culture, that's the one thing that draws me in is it, 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 it brings everyone in. So. But I still feel at the end of the day, you know, we're all individuals because, you know, what I liked, you know, with the homies like, you know, three years ago, it's changed, you know, or people change, you know, so, yeah. I, I hear you, like man. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're talking about being cultured and like being exposed to, to all kinds of cultures, you know, that that's San Francisco for you, man, you know, yeah, uh, yeah I also grew up at in San, or I went to school at least in San Francisco until up to, up to college and yeah it's so different like when I don't know if you've noticed this like people from the Bay Area or at least like San Francisco in particular if you were raised out here the vibe is just different out there like you, you know you go to any other place in the in the country they're just like you know they're a specific way that I feel like I never thought about it too unless i was out there is that I, am i doing too much or like like what, what, what's different about me from everybody else you know like, <laughs> so yeah I, I show people out wherever i go like the first time i went to new york everyone knew i wasn't from new york you know because <laughs> a few like like salsa clubs i went to you know people would talk to me in spanish and i'll answer back in english and be like oh are you black and dominican are you black and cute i'm like I, last i checked i was black but sure <laughs> you know but i trip people out wherever i go because you know one they hear me say hello and they're like oh you're from california and i'm like okay you're you saying light i'm like yeah i'm not from la i'm from san francisco I'm from the bay um 
But I, I like that. I like that, you know, quirkiness, that quirk that I bring, you know. Like my grandfather's from the South, so sometimes my Southern drawl will come out. And they're like, where are you from? I'm like, well, my grandfather's from Mobile, Alabama. So, but sometimes, you know, you'll hear that. It's rare, but it, it happens. So. Yeah. No, my, my accent comes out every once in a while, too. Like, I don't know what it is. Probably when I'm drunk and <laughs> trying to... <laughs> trying to be filipino all my accent will come out uh, <laughs> but yeah man well we, we made it to the final stretch of the podcast uh, before we we get to those questions there's this thing i do called the 34th mantra where i'm gonna ask you to just fill in some blanks um and there's only three so the first one is i am blank i am awesome second one is i can blank dance and the third one is I will blank. Get through all this crap that I'm going through right now. <laughs> For sure, man. And, you know, if you ever need a reminder, now you got the sound bite of yourself, you know, making those statements. For the future. For the future, if you need a reminder. Uh, Thank you, man. No problem. No problem. And uh, let's get it. The final stretch. Uh, oh, that's right. The first question for you is actually from my previous guest. Uh, sh- shout out to DJ Vetti. Uh, his question for you is, what makes you you? What makes me me? Oh, man. Uh, the fact that I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. No, nah, but this, this is kind of like what I, I touched on um, earlier. Just I feel like I'm just a real genuine like person. But what makes me me is just like... Um, just my willingness to like put myself out there for folks you know like I like I like helping I like vibing with people you know so you know I'm going through my stuff right now I, I kind of want to like make you laugh I kind of want to like you know do nice things for you I want to like hook you up some donuts I want to bake you a peach cobbler you know I'm just very um yeah I'm very like uh, uh, empathetic in that in that regard you know I think that's what makes me me um, sure. yeah anything else you wanted to add or? no i just i just i just like i said when i when i buy the people i got a lot of love for them you know and so i'll do what i can do to like you know make your day a little bit better and i just naturally like doing that it's weird even before i got into teaching and all that other stuff i just i just always been like that since i was a kid um but it had been brought to my attention as I got older. Um, and I'm just now really embracing that. I hear you, man. Like all the little things that the personality traits we had as kids are just like amplified the older we get. And it's really up to us if we want to accept them or change them. Um, but no, nah, I, I hear you. <laughs> I, I'm there with you. Uh, my, my second question for you is, what would you like to ask the next guest that comes on to 34 Questions? do you have any regrets at this point in your life Ooh, you went heavy i got you <laughs> <laughs> hey so some people go light some people go heavy so i appreciate you going yeah. heavy at this point in your life just write it down uh and then my last question for you, the question that ties everything together, is generations down the road, maybe 100, 200 years from now, um, your descendants are watching this video. What would you like to tell them? Uh, have fun. Don't try to, don't take the site too seriously, you know? Um, help people. You know, it's always, and, and don't do it to get in the war. Just do it because that's just the natural thing to do. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, any last things you'd like to add before we head out of here? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you for having me on your podcast. Um, it, was, uh, it was actually therapeutic for me to kind of get some stuff off my chest. So, uh, but yeah, we already kind of hit the obligatory, like, plugs for, for, for my, my business but um 
Yeah, man. Uh, nothing really much to say. I appreciate you, man. And uh, I just want to wish you continued growth and success with your podcast. So, you know, don't doubt yourself. Keep it pushing, man. Likewise, man. Uh, thank you again for, for stopping by. I want to thank the folks out there. If you listen in, tuning in, um, appreciate your time as well. If you liked it, please like it. If you loved it, please subscribe and share. Uh, remember to reach out, reach forward. As always, much love. And we'll catch you guys next time on 34 Questions. Peace. Peace. And then I got this, uh, my like after credit scene. Don't worry, it won't, it won't take too much time. Um, but yeah, how was the... Uh, How's the experience for you? Um, anything you disliked or enjoyed a lot? You know, this is where I kind of get my feedback from my guests. So. <laughs> no, it, it, it was cool. Uh, uh, kind of wish it could have gone longer. <laughs> no doubt, man. I mean, oh, was, was go like, ahead. Hour just like went by. I was like, oh crap! It's, when you said it was like okay, we're ten minutes left, I was like, oh man. So, I mean, I take that as a good thing though, because you know we were able to talk about like some things and just kind of keep going and just kind of really like just roll off each other so i thought that was dope so yeah but one hour is like perfect so you know i just get like talking sometimes with certain people so, oh where you going oh no i mean that i'm, I'm all about that I, I love it when my guests you know feel impassioned to speak about something and i never want to stop that flow either you know like that's that's how i, I kind of go about things um but yeah i mean uh, thank you for, for sharing all the stories you shared and, you know, dropping that knowledge on me. Uh, I, and honestly, I didn't know I, I had a world champ on the show. So that, that's pretty cool. But don't worry. Like, I, I like that. I like to keep it as a surprise for folks. Um, so I, I only say that just because um, I want to go ahead.